And you can tell when my healing's complete because I'll turn your scab into a scar. And that thing is so powerful, they got y'all ashamed of scars. Look at your body today when you go home or tonight. And anywhere you see a scab, you know you're looking at God's work complete. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. And so when you stop and think who you are and, and what your whole game is about, they can't turn the thing around. Hey, white folks going to trick on King's birthday. Well, they got something happened the last two years on King's birthday. I don't know if it's a pattern, but if it keeps up. I mean, do you all realize last year, a year from the Monday that King's birthday was celebrated this year, last year on the 15th Monday, the earthquake hit this town, and a year later on the Monday of King's birthday, the earthquake hit Japan. Now, I don't know what's going to happen next, but if it happens, the next two years, I'm going to say, well, maybe we need to cancel that. <laughs> How long? And when y'all going to start listening to that inner voice? And you can't listen to that inner voice if your diet's not right. I'm so damn sick and tired of that O.J. Simpson mess. J. Simpson. I mean, this time last year, none of that mess had happened. And if I were to ask all of you all this time last year, I'm going to give you all $10,000 to write 300 people who you admire the most. O.J.'s name wouldn't have been on it. And before that mess happened, ask yourself, when's the last time you mentioned O.J. Simpson's name? To have some old slutty white woman gonna get murdered, and all at once they accuse him of it, and they make him like he was sitting at the right hand of God. And y'all better start listening, cause that whole thing ain't making sense. Here a nigga whoop a white woman, and people can hear her hollering eight blocks away, but when it come time for her to die, didn't nobody hear it. <laughs> now, now, do a, uh, do a whooping hurt me more than a killing? <laughs> I mean, two people got killed and nobody heard nothing. But when he whooping that white woman, all the neighbors heard it. Oh, he's whooping her again. <laughs> this is the original picture that went out. This is Time Magazine. Don't get carried away with that. Understand one thing. Ain't hey, nobody in this country can make Time Magazine doctor a picture except the United States government. So if the mafia killed her, which it could have happened, the Colombians could have killed her, a bunch of thugs could have killed her, but only the government can make Time Magazine change a picture. <laughs> Then that means who's involved? Hmm? Do y'all do y'all hear God talking to y'all? But do you listen? Take the two mothers, you'd have found out something. Now, I can't speak for men, but women, you got a baby. When the Carol Simpson's mother said she got the last phone call from her daughter that night at 11 o'clock. Y'all know that? But 11 o'clock don't fit, because if she talks to her daughter at 11 o'clock, that put OJ out the loop. So they not only told that mother she was wrong, but got bail telephone documents to prove that the call was 942. Now, mother, on the night that a tragic hit your child, you know what time you got that phone call. Now watch out now. But if Bell Telephone come up and document that you didn't get it, at this time you got it, this time, who is the only people can make Bell Telephone change? United States government can make them change a record. Not no pimps, not no hoes, not no drug pushes, the United States government. And then there was another mother involved that y'all seemed to overlook. 
O.J. Simpson's mother came down for the funeral. And when she looked at that boy, she saw something that upset her so bad, they carried her back that night to San Francisco and put her in the hospital. And up until I left for South Africa, she hadn't been to visit that boy yet. Now, black women, you know, black mothers do not abandon their boys when they get in trouble. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. You two, Jim, y'all can be brothers. You can have 12 doctor's degrees, getting ready to become president of, of, of Princeton University, and he can be getting sentenced for breaking the internet. Mom gonna be with him. But she ain't been here. Every time I look around, I, I see Rosie Greer. Don't forget Rosie Greer was with JFK, Robert Kennedy, when he got popped. Yeah, he keeps showing up. I'm talking about he a preacher. He look like one, don't he? <laughs> And listen, when NBC and CBS and ABC don't challenge your credentials, all right? Ain't nobody in the network news challenge where you go to school, where you get your preacher from. Nigga, what church you from? They just accept that. Watch it. And then Sapiro with his little old. He wrote Virgin Russell's last five books. Genius. Breathe. Don't nothing happen he don't know about. All over the world. So he knows stuff most folks don't know. People call him, people call me. Freddie Prince called me, he got some information on the Kennedy assassination and I'm trying to explain to him that my phone's tapped. He said, well how you live with a tapped phone? You serious? I mean, first you have to understand the mentality of a spy. You met somebody going to college four years, want to be a spy? <laughs> That's like wanting to be Mickey Mouse when you grow up. <laughs> and all I got to do when I get off here is go to pay phone, call my wife at home, and read the alphabets off backwards, and then white boys be up the next three days trying to break that code. <laughs> I'll call my wife and say real quick, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. They think it's something up. I hit the airport and three white boys is sitting there look. I can always tell the black cop. I mean they give themselves away. Trying to be here. What it is, my brother. After Freddie Prince called me and told me he had something on the Kennedy assassination I needed to get to before I could tell him to be cool and next day he was dead. Said he committed suicide. Hey, that, that ain't no problem. See, the great thing about this movement is those of us that choose to be in this movement and ought to be in this movement, we chose to penalize our families if it come to that. So that ain't no big thing. I just tell you this story to tell you this. John Bellucci got in touch with Mark Lane, who we did the book together. And John Bellucci said, I got some stuff for you on the Kennedy assassination. When can me, you, and Greg meet? So, so Mark Lane called me and said, well, look here, man. Uh, 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 we can meet, uh, uh, but, but Greg can't meet because he's speaking. Uh, but we can meet uh, such and such a day in Detroit. And so John Bellucci and Mark Lane had set up a meeting in Detroit to talk about what he had on the Kennedy assassination. John Bellucci was murdered the night before he spoke to fight Detroit. And the white girl that gave him the overdose, you remember that? Sapiro was her lawyer. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I'm in LA, right? So if we know the CIA put a hit on John Belushi, and Sapiro handled the white girl that killed him, what do that make him? That's the game. And why would, they, why would all them lawyers sit there and let that chump judge, whose wife, when they could have knocked her off, why'd they keep him? He ain't never ruled in their favor. And then 
when, when the judge reached into the lottery the first day to pick the number, y'all know? You remember the number he picked? 32. OJ's football jersey number. I mean, come on. I mean, they ain't even got no shame. <laughs> and, 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 you know, OJ was a brilliant athlete. Y'all know that. You know how you know he's a brilliant athlete? Them records he said he had Southern Cal, he did that in two years. Did y'all know that? Did, I mean, did you know that? You know, he didn't go there for a year. The boy was so dumb when he came out of high school, the boy had to go to junior college for two years. So all those records he set when he was here, he did it in two years. This dumb athlete was so dumb, he couldn't go right from high school to a regular college. He went to junior college for two years, and every time I see this dumb nigga on television now, he writing. <laughs> the lawyers ain't writing, just him. And I keep saying, then, who is that? It sure ain't that dumb OJ. I knew. How long? Because if they get by with this one, y'all next. And I don't say that to scare you. I'm saying this is what they're doing. 95 million people looked at the chase on the highway. You know damn good and well there's a whole lot of things a cop can't do, but cops really know how to chase. I looked at the helicopter that followed that mess for five hours and said, whoever's up there been trained to do this. This just ain't no ordinary news person that follow a car for five hours and never miss it. Until it come time for him to get out the car, they didn't get that shot. 95 million people looked at it like me, and 95 million people didn't see nobody in that car but one person. Why you let somebody tell you it was two people in that car? And when he got up to the house, his son ran to the car, and a hand pushed him out the way. His son didn't even see nobody in that car. And then after it got dark, and no cameras there, they tell us, he's under arrest. He's under arrest. We got him. Did y'all watch that? Did y'all see them cops dressed like bushes? Who said yes? You remember, you see that? Them cops, I mean, did y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? They had cops out at his house when they knew he was going home. Y'all got cops in this town that's dressed, I mean, them cops look more like a bush than a bush. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, it was dressed like a bush. I, I ain't never peed on a bush till after I saw that. I don't pee on nothing but bushes now. <laughs> And I'm mad because I've been peeing on a bush about 37 times and there was real bushes. I'm trying to pee on a cop. <laughs> Young black folks in America have a higher asthma death all year than all the people that die from asthma all over the world. Why? Because they don't drink water. Y'all ain't got nothing at home but a bunch of pop, Kool-Aid, all that old crap. And why? Why do they want something sweet? Because we as adults that messed up so bad, the sweetness has gone out of their life. We haven't even changed the white racist system. And so they keep reaching for something sweet. You keep reaching for something sweet. Those of us out here in the movement, we don't need nothing sweet because we making what was bitter sweet for all of us. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And then you, this is your movement, you don't know nothing about it. You got to turn on a white network news to find out who you are. I had a dream. King ain't... Hey, look, I knew King. King ain't never mentioned a dream but one time. That was on the March on Washington. But if you listen to white folks who didn't pay, you see, they're doing the same thing to King they did to Jesus. They're giving y'all the messenger, but not the message. That's what they're giving. The messenger. They'll package that and talk about a dream. That's safe. So I said, well, wait a minute. Let me check these white folks out. They talking about a dream? Maybe it's about a dream. Let me check. So white guy said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the library and get me some books and read about the founding fathers and see if they was dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't found nothing in here about George Washington and Monroe and them cats dreaming. I said, well, Napoleon had the greatest army in the world. Let me see if he was a dreamer. I can't find nothing about Napoleon dreaming. 
Then, then why have they reduced King down to a dream? I have a dream that one day little black children and white children be riding on some damn ride. Who cares? <laughs> it ain't about the color of your skin, but the contents of your character. King didn't need to tell me that. I learned that from Hitler. Hitler proved to me, regardless of what color your skin is, the boy didn't have no character. So why I need King to tell me that? Shame on y'all. That's your movement. And the one thing about King they can't lie on, King wrote 15 books. All his speeches is recorded. So there's no way that they should be able to lie on King to you. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Martin Luther King brought damn near 600,000 people to Washington, D.C. And what did he tell us? He talked about the United States Constitution. I was there. He talked about the Declaration of Independence. I was there. He talked about the Emancipation Proclamation. I was there. He talked about a hundred years ago at the Emancipation Proclamation, America wrote us a check and he said, we come here to say to you, America, your check has bounced. We come there to talk about insufficient funds. He didn't talk about no damn dream. He said, where's the money? <laughs> and he ended his speech talking about a dream. That was the end. I looked around six weeks later, and all I heard white folks talking about all over the world, is we came to Washington, D.C., and King told us about a dream. It is your job to make sure that your children know what black folks are saying. Not get it from NBC and CBS and ABC who don't give a damn about you. At all. And we got to start changing this thing and understand how your mind works. Your mind don't deal with what you meant, it deals by what you said. So if I say, I sure would like to go to Paris, but I don't think I can afford it. You just told every cell in your body, see to it, you never get to Paris. <laughs> if you say, girl, this is killing me. Y'all saw Red Fox, Red Fox thought he was playing. He had the hottest series that anybody had in history, and every time he didn't want to do nothing, he faked what? <laughs> and one day he was on the set and fell dead from a heart attack. You better be careful what you put in your head. You better be very careful what you put in your head. You better be careful how you talk about, girl, this is killing me. Every time I go to a funeral and hear the preacher say, we all got to die one day, I'm proud. I say, not me. Don't put that in my head. Mm -mm, I know, not me. No, no, I ain't gonna let you program something in here that's not supposed to be in there. That's right. When I lived on a farm, I looked at them trees. I got trees on that farm, 300 years old. I know I'm hipper than a damn tree. And I talked to them trees, I said, tree, you know I'm gonna outlive you. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world, this is my house. You living on my land, and you gonna outlive me? No, no, no. <laughs> and so I, I say to you, when you understand who you are, and how important you are, and sometimes y'all got to go home, shut the television off, shut the radio off. If they was good for you, you wouldn't have one. Anything that's good for you, black folk can't get. I can't get a good school. I can't get good food. I can't get good water. But I can have radio and television. And you know why y'all here now, y'all got television in the house? You know y'all can be taping a show while y'all here now, you know that? And you know when you're taping, you, if you're taping right now, you know your television don't come on. Now ask yourself a question. If you can tape a show while you're gone without your television coming on, then what do they run through that set at night while you sleep to program your mind? Hmm? Hmm? And when you go home today, look at your color television set that you cut off and see if that light ain't on. What I got in my house when I shut off, it don't go off. Then get it out of here. <laughs> I drive a car, if I shut my 
I called him. The car wouldn't go off. Somebody come have his car. And brothers and sisters, you got to be careful what you say. Sometimes it sounds good, but you're programming for failure. Yeah, I could have got that job if I wasn't black. You know damn good well I got that bank loan if I wasn't black. You keep putting that into your subconscious mind and you telling your brain something wrong with being black. You didn't get that loan because they was white. Put the negative on them, not on me. That's right. That's right. You didn't get that job because they was white. Now change it. And if you change it enough, you jump on them as quick as you jump on me. That's the whole program. It's very important. And brothers and sisters, we got to hold one another's hand. Now wait a minute now, that sound good. You got to be careful how you hold my hand if you ain't been holding it. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if me and you been married and we got a bad relationship and you go hear some speaker talking about go home and be in love, you come home smiling and nigga go up and say, hey, Joey, well, what you been doing? How come you so happy? <laughs> Who you been with? <laughs> Don't go home all happy now if you ain't been happy. <laughs> all right, okay. And you know, you got to deal with the brother because we, we ain't mad at you. Me and you lovers and, 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 and you fix this apple pie, and I'm sitting there eating, and I'm mad at white folks. And you say, how you like the pie? I say, I'm eating it, ain't I? That's affection. I'm eating it, ain't I? Now, we got to change that. You got to start with them little children. Little children. About love. About love. You can try everything else. You can't get no badder than black folks. Y'all in wore every kind of outfit you can wear. <laughs> Y'all done gone from the $2,000 pair of shoes to the $6,000 to the whoopie doop to all kind of stuff on you. You done twisted your hair 40 different ways and niggas still ain't free. <laughs> then try something else, because you don't scare white folks. These little chump white folks, you scared, they, they don't count, it ain't but five white folks on the whole planet. The rest of them's imposters. White ain't got nothing to do with a color. White is an attitude. If you ain't got some big, big billions of dollars in the bank, you can't have that attitude. And most of them folks you call white, the real white folks will kill them on the way to get me. <laughs> and they don't know that. White lady think she white. She, she need to be out here in the movement. I knew that when I was a little bitty boy, going to the movie to see Frankenstein. Wolfman, Dracula. A white boy wrote Frankenstein, Wolfman, Dracula, all them hard stuff, and they wasn't killing them but white ladies. I knew then that white boy didn't like her. And that's the first time I realized how dumb a white woman is. Frankenstein moved one foot a week. <laughs> now the dumbest black sister in the ghetto, I mean mentally retarded, can see Frankie coming, she'll finish barbecuing her ribs, she'll finish fixing the potato salad, she'll clean up the kitchen, and she still got enough time to get out of that house before Frankie gets to the back door. <laughs> Old dumb white woman in King Kong then fell in love with a go real. How many of y'all saw King Kong? Did you know that's white boy's symbol of a black man raping a white lady? That's what... Yeah. what? You better be careful what you look at. You better be careful. <laughs> Did y'all ever see the Long Ranger? There was, there was an Indian. What was his name? What did the Long Ranger call him? Tonto. No, 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 wait, if you don't know, don't yell it out, don't, you know. <laughs> the Indian called Long Ranger, Kim Osama. The Long Ranger called the Indian, Tonto. That's Spanish. Kim Osabi in Spanish mean the learned one, Tonto in Spanish mean the stupid one. Okay? Okay? So Y'all better be careful what we program. Hospital. Hospital, that's a Latin word. It means a place to die. 
85% of everybody that died in America last year died in hospitals. They just 15% off. If a hospital is a place to die and you go and they don't kill you, you should sue them for malpractice. <laughs> of people in America didn't die in dope dens, didn't die in taverns, didn't die in drive-by shootings, they died in hospitals. Better take care of your body. I said to my wife, I said, babe, we've been married 35 years. Thank you, it's not difficult. I wasn't home most of the time. Let me tell you, brother, how many of y'all brothers in here that's not married? Let me, just, let me just tell you something now. Let me get you ready. I mean, you're talking to an old pro. You cannot come in between mom and the children. Don't even try it. Amen. I mean, they got some stuff going on in the house you don't even know about. I mean, they can wink and blink at each other. <laughs> let me tell you something. My children is so into my wife, which is their mother. Now, that don't mean they don't like me. They just so into her, I don't count. If the house caught on fire, they'd run up and get her and forget me. They didn't mean to, they just so into, come on, mom, the house on fire. Then they'd be outside throwing pebbles up to the window trying to wake me up. <laughs> and I'm so stupid, after I wake up, I'm running trying to grab her, she out there with them. <laughs> so when that dawned on me, I said to her, now no baby, the house ever catch on fire. Now, I'm never here, so chances are if you catch up, I'm not going to be here. If that's cool, that's cool. But if I'm here, I'm going to let you know now. I'm not letting you go downstairs because the children slept downstairs. I'm not letting you go downstairs to get the children. She said, why? I said, because I'm not going. She said, well, I'll go by myself. No, 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 that's the problem. How can I, as a celebrity, explain to my friends that you went down there and burned up and I didn't go? You going out the window with me. <laughs> and then you get it, brothers. These are my children. Uh-oh, they're going to get you in trouble now. You know, let me tell you something. Y'all hear me good now. When you go home, think about this. 98% of everybody that gets killed in fires, they die at home where they never have fire drills. They have fire drills in public places, but 98% of everybody that die in a fire die at home. And let me tell you, when that house catch on fire and that smoke is there, you can't see you well. I'm saying now, nah, plan you an escape out. Know which way you going. And then people say to me, Greg, you got 10 children, ain't never read no scandal. Few celebrities, you ain't heard nothing bad about the children. How'd you do it? Well, to you brothers that ain't been married, here's the way you do it now. Don't tell my secret. Mother nursed the baby. The phone ring, mother sit the baby down, leave the room to go answer the phone. I would walk into the crib, baby looking for some more titty, right? I say to the baby, see me, little bit, I'm your daddy and I'm crazy. <laughs> then I leave. She come in, she say, girl.